Stevie Lane 5 1, turn right, heading 180. 1 4 Papa, turn right 245, report localizer established. So the start to another week brings, as requested by you all, another bulky and busy Aviation News recap video that centres around topics within the aviation industry, big and small, that took place over the last week. There's lots of exciting news from special liveries to orders and so much more. So sit back, buckle in and stay tuned. Beginning with American Airlines and JetBlue, who recently announced that they were expanding their code share further. The code share means that the pair's routes in various different markets will link up and obviously benefit a number of customers. On top of this, though, there's been a further announcement of a total of 33 new routes, which in today's climate is in fact quite rare to be completely honest. American Airlines are going to be expanding further from New York with services through to Latin America, beginning in the coming months. The airline is planning on utilising its Boeing 777-200s, A319s and so forth. It doesn't stop just though at Latin America, with more destinations that are also going to be added as you can now see on your screen. I'll give you a second to pause just to be able to see it. Moving over though to their domestic schedule, this is where the real changes are going to be taking place. Almost all of these bar the Kansas City, Orange County and Columbus, Ohio are seasonal services. The remainder are year-round additions and there's a number of them. JetBlue are also seeing wholesale changes as well to their operations and once again, I'll reiterate that seeing something like this is totally not that expected given current situations. The complete list of changes over at JetBlue can be seen on your screen now. There's new services from Newark, JFK and more. And the changes are big ones. And these are things travellers can look forward to heading on as the pandemic eases. In my honest opinion, it is brilliant stuff to see as they bolster their network and provide additional connections, not just throughout the United States, but also on select international services in the coming months. Moving across to Air Canada and their very special retro livery, which was recently unveiled and made headlines worldwide within the aviation industry. And it's not hard to see why. Retro liveries nowadays are the pride and joy for spotters and have become a bigger trend as people enjoy the flash from the past. Air Canada rolled out their retro livery on the Airbus A220 to celebrate the carrier's rich history. The aircraft is commemorating Trans Canada Airlines, which was the airline that existed prior to Air Canada and is registered on to, as mentioned, an A220, but specifically C-GNBN. You might be asking though, just what kind of a role did Trans Canada Airlines have and when did it turn into Air Canada? Well, they were founded back in the late 1930s and saw a major rebranding to Air Canada almost 30 years later in 1965. And since then, it's been as we've known it, Air Canada and the go-to carrier for international travel for Canadians and those wishing to visit the wonderful land of Canada. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on the special livery unveiled by Air Canada and if you're excited to see it eventually flying. Moving along to ASL Aviation, who announced that they were going to be moving forward with their option for a further 10 Boeing 737-800 converter freighters. This was actually a deal that was announced all the way back in 2019, actually back prior to the pandemic and specifically at our last proper taste of a major air show, and that was the Paris edition. The original order that was placed included 10 firm orders and an additional option for 10 more. Those 10 from the leasing company have been activated now. Dave Andrew, who is the chief executive of ASL Aviation Holdings, commented on the aircraft's capabilities, saying, The aircraft offers an excellent option for our express cargo customers as they develop their networks to meet demand in the years ahead. It is right-sized in payload and range and offers the improved carbon efficiencies that ASL and our customers see as, as an essential element in fleet planning as we aim for future carbon neutrality. The aircraft is boosted thanks to great efficiency and market-leading reliability as described by the director of conversions over at Boeing. The freight market continued to get a boost with CMA CGM Group announcing that they were going to establish an air freight division for their operations and launch with four of the Airbus A330 freighter aircraft. This will be known as, wait for it, CMA CGM Air Cargo. Yep, it's quite the name, but you might just be asking what the point in this acquisition and new freighter division is actually for. Well, the acquisitions will benefit their current logistical network moving forward, as said by, I guess you could say, the new cargo company. On the surface, the company specializes in container shipping. Either way, it's one of the more interesting aviation news pieces to come from the past week, in my opinion. It may not be the biggest. It's definitely intriguing to see a new division set up. 
The Boeing 737 MAX has also recently seen a couple of ungrounding orders, with beginning the UAE announcing that they would allow the type to fly into their airspace moving forward. However, the airlines will first be required to make a plan that is seen as suitable to have the type return to service and, in addition, a strategy that addresses different requirements set by every single regulator worldwide. So while it has indeed been cleared, there's still just a little more stuff to come before it can properly fly with customers or fly through the airspace. Meanwhile, the Boeing 737 made its first commercial flight in Europe last week following a lengthy 22 months on the ground. The flight originated in Brussels and has operated throughout Europe in the days following. It actually comes a couple of weeks after the aircraft was first approved to fly within Europe. That being on the 27th of January, they join a host of other countries and also areas like that of the United States, Brazil, Canada and so on that have approved the jet for commercial service. The date of the 27th of January, which is when it was approved, also highlights my point regarding the UAE. While it has been approved, it will take some time for the aircraft, or airline, pardon me, to get the aircraft back in the skies, maybe a month or a little bit under. The date's approved, it doesn't necessarily mean it will be flying that very next day. There's still some additional work behind the scenes that really needs to take place, and that is what is going to take place now. Airbus also reported a net loss of some 1.1 billion euros for the 2020 calendar year. In addition, the aircraft manufacturer noted that they delivered a total of 566 commercial aircraft during that calendar year as well. The Airbus chief executive officer said, The 2020 results demonstrate the resilience of Airbus in the most challenging crisis to hit the aerospace industry. I want to thank our teams for their great achievements in 2020 and acknowledge the strong support of our helicopters and defence and also space businesses. I would also like to thank our customers, suppliers and partners for their loyalty to Airbus. Now, I would just like to mention that if you have any thoughts on the topics I mentioned in today's video, now that could potentially be focusing on Airbus and their recent losses, maybe it's news regarding the 737 MAX or potentially you want to comment on the Air Canada, feel free to do so and create a dialogue in the comments section. If you're still watching this video now, you're also welcome to join the Discord server which is where we talk all things aviation. It's a great community with over 1000 members and you can find the link in the top of the description. Until the next video though, please do continue to stay safe. Thank you so much for anyone that still is tuning into these videos while times are relatively tough. And I will see you all, of course, tomorrow for the next aviation video.